Welcome back to today's aviation news recap. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. In today's news, I take a look at an aircraft retirement that is upcoming. An airline that has been suspended indefinitely now for fraudulent related reasons and updates surrounding Bonza. Let me begin with your aircraft retirement news with Fiji Airways announcing plans to streamline its operations over the coming years. And as part of those plans, the airline has confirmed it will formally retire the A330 fleet. The airline has just three A330s in service based on data at the time of recording. However, the airline's CEO told Forbes that the business sees three owned A330 200s and one leased A330 300. Ultimately, the retirement of these A330s is expected to start in the upcoming years and shouldn't necessarily come as a shock. However, the airline will not replace the A330s with the currently operational A350s. Instead, Fiji Airways must decide how to replace the A330 internally. And yes, while the A350 could be the option, they will need to go in for more units. The A330, when you think about Fiji Airways, well, it's been a cornerstone for some time. And the jet was important long before other aircraft arrived onto international markets. Thanks to the A350's arrival and deployment, Deployment, however, the company has begun to understand the true capabilities of next generation aircraft and just how they are able to aid them in the long term. With the Airbus A330 fleet averaging over 10 years of age, it isn't actually old by any means, especially when considering how long some companies will look to retain their A330 fleet. But for Fiji Airways, aligning with other next generation jets is a pretty essential consideration. Alongside a pretty strong commitment to the A350 as touched on. The company has also integrated the 737 MAX into its network for your more single aisle operations. EG Airways says the 737 is a great aircraft on markets towards Australia and New Zealand that say may not require the capacity of the A350 or even the A330. So the Airbus widebody that I allude to is definitely more optimal for your longer ranged markets. Following the pandemic the company has emerged also as a pretty attractive option for customers that are looking to travel across the Pacific. Fiji Airways' price point means that for those heading to markets such as Australia from North America or vice versa, the stopover in Fiji presents a pretty cheaper alternative to your non-stop flights. And while some may consider a stopover as annoying, others will see it as an opportunity. Fiji Airways hopes with time to convert more of those transit travellers to travel travelers that are actually coming to stay. By adding more next generation aircraft, the company wants to continue elevating those customer service levels. Replacing the A330 at the end of the day won't be easy, but the company's team will do their due diligence before selecting the best replacement for them. Over to Bonza, who have been handed a lifeline thanks to their administrators, and now a new two-month window has been granted to help find a buyer. Administrators from Hall at Chadwick had been attempting to secure an extension as employees continue to await the fate of the airline that we know shut its doors at the end of April. While several parties are reportedly interested in purchasing the airline, nothing has materialized as of yet. The latest extension through July 29 is an important step in attempting to save Bonza or at the very least ensure that there is an appropriate formal shutdown where no one is, say, left in the dark. The grounding that we've seen has really sparked much discussion about the state of the Australian aviation industry and the impact of the low-cost unit disappearing. While there is undoubtedly an impact on customers, there is a hundred strong employee base that has been placed in limbo since the end of April, with their fate obviously a key priority. The best outcome for Bonza would be a return to the skies through obtaining a suitable buyer. Despite the many challenges that would then obviously present themselves afterwards, it would be a right step. However, if this is not possible, the administrators know that securing the best for their 
their employees and others will be the highest priority if the company goes on to say being liquidated and the air operating certificate is revoked. Bonza's aircraft have largely left the country, dealing obviously a blow to what is left of Bonza, its crew and passengers. However, staff, like I said, remain at the most threat with struggles to obtain key payments that they are owed. Amid the rising cost of living, these people are stuck, really unsure of what their next move is going to be. As debt was calculated to have reached the AUD 116 million mark, creditors have remained hopeful that there will eventually be a buyer for the airline. Now, Bonza cancelled flights at the end of April amid rising pressures surrounding its modern 737 MAX fleet. Launching at the beginning of 2023, the airline would basically collapse some 15 months later, following bold ambitions that didn't eventuate. Bonza was very clear that it wanted to be a game changer, yes for the Australian aviation industry, but it placed a large focus on the people that call this country home. In its first year of operations, the airline claimed it saved hundreds of thousands of passengers good amounts of money over full-service airlines thanks to its low-cost airfares. Moreover, the airline looked to operate on either unserved or underserved routes, with connectivities to cities at a low price being a priority. However, there were, yes, significant network shuffles, passenger numbers were still solid across key areas, but the involvement of 777 partners quickly emerged as the overarching problem in Impacting the company, which would later result in the suspension of flights. On to Nigeria Air, which was meant to be an up and coming Nigerian airline that has now been, as we know, suspended, but now the federal government has confirmed that will be indefinitely. Confirmation of suspension, but now indefinitely, comes following concerns around the ownership and the intentions of this airline. Notably, there were concerns over how the Nigerian airline claimed to be Nigerian. While the name, yes, did suggest it was Nigeria Air, there were valid concerns thanks to the involvement of Ethiopian Airlines. That this basically major company was attempting to steal a market share and profit off the country. When establishing a new airline in this market, any airline launch is targeted to be wholly Nigerian. So as a result, the airline launch must need to benefit Nigeria solely and not say be to profit another company or country. The federal government believes that there's no reason to unsuspend this airline if it will not truly benefit Nigeria and its people. So as a result, the project that made headlines across 2023 will remain grounded with no visible date to get in the air. Moreover, earlier reports in 2024 suggested the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission of Nigeria, the EFCC, is actually conducting an ongoing investigation into this project. The investigation aims to understand the company, the opposition, and intentions to determine whether Nigerians will be impacted, the fate of this being important. Nigeria Air, or Air Nigeria as it was referred to, was announced in the 2018 edition of the Farnborough Air Show. So it's been around for some time and it has popped up in the headlines here or there, but really it's not been smooth sailing with a lot of pushback in obtaining that AO see because airlines believed in the local market they would be impacted and then when you have the federal government stepping in things get a lot more complicated that is going to conclude today's aviation news recap thank you very much for tuning into this video if you have any thoughts be sure to let me know down below in the comments thanks a lot again and i'll see you same place same time tomorrow for your latest aviation news and we'll fly.